G'day everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be talking about the Christians in Arms Ridgeline in 300 PRC. So I've had this rifle for I think about two years now, give or take a couple of months. Shot quite a few animals with it, done quite a fair bit of hunting with it and I just want to go over our pros and cons. This isn't an advertisement or a sponsored video or anything like that. So YouTube check a man or woman if you're reviewing this video to be monetized. It's all sweet, it's within your guidelines, so let me run with it. <laughs> so just gonna go over the pros and cons, and we're gonna start off with the cons. Now just quickly before we start, you're gonna notice bandage on my hand, that's from a previous video, I talk about that, if you wanna go back and check that out, I kinda got a shark hook stuck in my hand. So the first con I've got noted down is the price. Prices fluctuate a lot due to stock availability, due to the US dollar, all these certain factors. The distributor fees, all those sort of things. So by the time it gets to the consumer, you're looking at around $5,000 Australian. So it is not a cheap rifle. That's the first con I've got written down. Second con I've got down is the factory trigger. They come with a trigger tech field and they're adjustable down to I think about two and a half, three pounds, somewhere around that range. And even on your lower setting, because the rifle's so light, that trigger weight feels too heavy. So it is something that you may need to swap out down the track. I'm not promoting that at all by any means, but I'm just saying the factory trigger is quite heavy in this lightweight outfit. So third con I've got written down is the stock design. Now a lot of people prefer this sort of traditional stock design, but others for more long range work, there's no real vertical pistol grip. You're sort of reaching for that trigger. It may be a con to some people. The next con I've got written down, it's sort of a pro and a con, but the barrel length for stalking. So these rifles come with a 26 inch barrel. I don't know whether the new models you can get a shorter barrel, but in 300 PRC this is a 26 inch barrel. And for stalking it is quite long. You often get hung up on branches and that when you're trying to duck under things. So just something to consider. Another con, same thing, it's great that they give you a muzzle brake, but it is a radial muzzle brake, and out of all the muzzle brake designs, it's probably one of my least favorite, because you've got the, the gas dispersion going in all different directions, which is great for recoil reduction, but you get a lot of dirt and stuff blowing up from underneath the muzzle, and then that comes back and hits you in the face, and gets on your lenses and that, like your optics. So, just something to be aware of. You can obviously swap out the muzzle brake and it's great they come with a factory muzzle brake but it is a radial design and yeah I, I'd personally prefer just a straight 90 degree three port brake. I feel like that would be a lot better option. Anyway that's just what they've done. And finally on the cons list I've got the bolt lift. So as you can sort of see here there is not a stack of clearance for your scopes. It's got quite a high bolt lift. I don't know the exact degrees on that but compared to a lot of other manufacturers and actions, it is quite a high bolt lift. So it's something to keep in mind if you're running a big rear objective scope, things like that, you're gonna have to be careful with your mount heights and stuff like that to stop it from hitting. All right, moving on, we're onto the pros now. So the very first pro off the bat is the weight of the rifle. 6.8 pounds bare, or about that 3.1 kilo mark. So a very lightweight, long range capable rifle. I know I mentioned it in the cons, but the stock design for stalking is a huge pro. It is very comfortable. It's comfortable to shoot off hand. It's comfortable to shoot resting on a tree branch or up against a stump or, you know, all those sort of things. It is a very comfortable all round stock. For long range, it's probably not the best stock design, but for most sort of versatile situations, I feel like the stock design is quite good. Now the pro, you've got a muzzle protector, a little threaded cap there if you don't want to run the muzzle brake. I take the muzzle brake on and off all the time for Remy's sake with her hearing. I try to avoid using the muzzle brake when I'm stalking and things like that. And I'll only really run the muzzle brake if I've got someone there to block Remy's ears or if I can keep her further back behind me just to try and prevent her hearing getting damaged. But it is great that they come with the muzzle brake and the thread protector, the little thread cap from factory, really nice touch. And to continue on with the muzzle brake, this rifle, and I don't know whether all rifles like this in this lineup do the same thing, but my rifle with and without the muzzle brake shoot the exact same point of impact. I've done videos on that in the past, shooting out to like seven, 800 yards, and with and without the muzzle brake shoots the same point of impact. So I can take the brake on or off and it does not matter. I don't need to change a thing, which is really handy, great peace of mind. 
Next pro, this rifle is accurate. I know there's been a lot of things in the past about Christians and arms and there's some lemons out there. I'm sure there's lemons out there for all gun makers, but my rifle here shoots sub minute all day long, all the way out to a thousand. That's with factory ammo. I've never hand loaded for this rifle. I just run factories. I don't have the time to be hand loading. I've got all the setup there to do it myself, but this thing shoots sub minute all day long out to a thousand with factory ammo. So it's more than good enough for me. Next Pro has really positive ejection. I've never had any feeding issues, never had any ejection issues. The action just runs nice and smooth. It's based off a of REM 700, so easy to get parts for and swap things out like that if you ever want to change or upgrade or whatever. So another Pro there. And finally, the last thing on my Pros list is the flush bottom metal floor plate. So it's top load only, load into here, and if you want to drop your rounds out, you just drop that out there in the trigger guard. But I really like that I don't have a magazine sticking out of the bottom. A lot of really high end, even custom gun makers, they'll have a magazine stick out of the bottom. I personally hate that. I hate having anything under here. You might get a couple more rounds of magazine capacity with a magazine that sticks out down here. But personally for me, I much prefer that flush finish. It looks better to me. It's more comfortable to hold, more comfortable to carry, more comfortable when you're slinging it. Also has a really good recoil pad from factory. As you can see here, there's no need to upgrade that recoil pad in my opinion. The one they've put on there is spot on. It's just firm enough that it's not too sort of mushy in your shoulder, but it's soft enough that you're not gonna get belted around too much. So anyway, I'm gonna run through some of the kill shots that this rifle has done, and hope you've enjoyed that video. Cheers. Just left off the center. trying to show everyone the joys of moving a big mature stag for a trophy photo. How's he look? <laughs> He's good at it, man. 